our winner. All right, so the news that I think surprised nobody came out last week. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever is over. 3D Realms is over. Um, This isn't so much newsworthy as it's kind of an interesting kind of timeline since the announcement of that game and where we are now. Um, I know it was announced in 1997, but I remember talking about it so much on GameSpot TV, which, you know, started in 1998. And I've always joked to myself that would this game come out before my career is over? Or, you know, what's going to give first, me or the game? Uh, well, now we know the answer. The, the game gave first. So, uh, winner. Uh, but it, it's funny because the obsession with the game left the interest in the game a long, long time ago. I don't think anybody for the past six years has like, actually had a legitimate discussion. Do you think it's going to be good? It was always, do you think it's going to come out? Uh, and it was just kind of a novelty factor, a parlor game. But what the game kind of represents is probably one of the last links to a lost era of video games, especially PC games, uh, because that was really the big thing back then. I, I know I've said before that when I started the show, we're talking about these two really interesting games called Unreal and Half-Life, and they really seem to be doing something spectacular. Um, obviously, look at them now. Uh, but there was, you know, it was, it was a nerdier, even more male culture than video games are now. There was a real kind of rough and tumble way to lay, where all the sort of Dallas shooter community was putting out games. You had John Romero being so boisterous and kind of putting his foot in his mouth about every opportunity that he had. Um, it, was, it was just kind of fun. You didn't know what was going to happen next, and there's a lot of rumors and speculation. It also is probably because while money was being made, the potential for money making was nowhere what it is now. And it, it is kind of a, a, a little piece of nostalgia. Um, I mean, the fact is, when the game, assuming the game was going to actually make it out, I don't think it would do very well. The character of Duke Nukem doesn't really sell anymore. I mean, I know he's supposed to be kind of a parody of action movie heroes from the 1980s, like Schwarzenegger and that, but we've moved past the point where that's even parodyable. I mean, I think a lot of people who would be buying games these days would be like, what's, what's, what's the big hubbub? You know, Duke Nukem, it's, it's, it's a name. It's just, it, it really, I don't know. It's, it's something of anachronism, and it's an anachronism we'll never learn about, and maybe we'll never even know what the hell happened over there. I mean, at some point, did they just stop developing the game, or were they really working on it thinking that something was going to happen? It's, it's one of those kind of glorious mysteries, you know, kind of like who is Deep Throat? And unfortunately, as with Deep Throat, when it's finally revealed, you're like, what? And I'm afraid that's going to happen to this, too. So maybe I'll be able to keep myself away from that knowledge, and the mystery of Duke Nukem forever will linger on in the mind.